Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. Like many aspects of the art world, working in it can be quite an opaque experience, particularly when it comes to salaries. Just how much does someone make at an auction house or a gallery or an artist studio? Many people in the art world wonder, am I making more than my colleagues or less than my colleagues? Am I being treated fairly? Well, we're finally seeing more wage transparency throughout the broader job market, and we're actually seeing headway in the art world. That's thanks to a few developments, including the recently released SML Art Market Salary Report, which is a brand new report published by Sophie McPherson Limited, the global market leader in art recruitment. And so we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into this report. So in this week's episode, we're joined by Rosie Allen, Manager Director of Sophie McPherson Limited. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks so much for listening. Rosie, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Adam. Absolutely. So you recently published the first edition of the SML Art Market Salary Report, which I think goes a long way in terms of providing wage transparency to the art world. Tell us, why did you produce the report? Well, the commercial sector of the art world has historically been opaque. When it comes to pay, development and career progression, we actually started a project that focused on salaries in 2019. However, it was due to be published in late March 2020. So for obvious reasons, we didn't go ahead. Um, as you can imagine, it just it just felt inappropriate to be talking about pay when salary cuts, furlough and layoffs were all being considered. 2022 seemed to be the bounce back year for hiring and employment for so many of our clients and for the wider art world. And as we gained more distance from the pandemic, it, it felt like the right time. So that's why we produced it at, at, at this point in time. Taking into account present concerns now facing the employment market, such as the cost of living and the recent pay transparency legislation in the US, the report was designed with employers in mind to be a resource. It's also available as an open resource to those looking at entering the employment market, those that might be considering shifting from one sector to another within the art market or even those that are transitioning into the art world from another industry. So what exactly is detailed in the report? And there's a lot of sensitive information in it, including wages. How did you get access to this kind of information? Yeah, so the report comments on pay for positions across the commercial art world, uh, with specific benchmarking detail on the US and the UK, where we've been operating for over 10 and 20 years, respectively. The idea was to paint a real life picture of the state of play. So the data sources that we used included the salaries that we negotiated and secured on behalf of the candidates that we placed in roles in art businesses throughout 2022. In addition, we used recruitment budgets that were shared and published by employers. And then we added information from active outreach to individuals across our core specialisms, So there are a few different ways that the data was brought in. Um, Discretion is at the heart of what we do, and therefore anonymity was ensured throughout. We've included at the end of the report, you probably saw some case studies. Um, The idea was to highlight pay that goes beyond the base salaries, which plays such an important part in in you know looking at full packages and in negotiations so that could include bonuses or commission even benefits um and these were benchmarked to avoid signaling any specific individuals earnings and what would you identify as some of the key findings from the report uh, pertaining to the revealing of these salaries or even just broader trends about salaries in the art world yeah so i mean well historically the art world has not been regarded as a high earning industry to work in But our observation is that actually earnings can be considerable over time and and particularly in the commercial art world. Um, I would say as as a general note, salaries have increased. That is our observation with with the biggest step changes reported in the US. That said, we have since release found that readers are, are interested in actually the parity between the UK and the US at auction houses. 
We believe this is down to the fact that a lot of auction houses that we work with are international and therefore might have more equitable salaries across different regions. Um, another point that gathered attention was that some UK roles seemed to earn more than their counterparts in the US. So where there are disparities like this, we have to consider that job title shifts and salary adjustments might happen at different times in the UK versus the U- the US. So, for example, where someone might have an effective promotion in terms of title in the US, uh, their equivalent in the UK may stay in one role for longer. So not necessarily moving up in terms of job title, but with their salary increasing in step with increased seniority or increased remit. Um, And this might not be a surprising factor, but the report shows that the highest earning sectors are commercial galleries and auction houses, with the highest paid roles being in sales or business development. It goes without saying that revenue generating roles do have higher salaries. Yeah, and so I often have people reaching out to me thinking about entering the art world, maybe they just graduated from university or they're thinking of shifting careers into the art world and they ask for some advice. And something I've always told them just through my observations and through my experiences is that if you want to have a successful career and also have a lucrative career, it's really important to have a position in the art world that's very close to the artwork or even close to the sale of the artwork. Uh, So ideally, you want to be as close to the transaction as possible. Is that something that you found as well in your information and your data? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it wasn't a surprise to us, but a lot of our findings weren't surprising because we're observing it firsthand day to day. Um, So it was actually just really interesting kind of hearing other people's feedback and surprise where there was surprise. So yeah, it's been it's been interesting post post release to hear from a lot of people. As you mentioned, the art world is very non transparent in many ways, including salaries. Now that we're starting to add some transparency there, do you think this could lead to any substantial changes in the future? Well, that's the hope. I mean, so pay transparency ultimately sheds light on what's both realistic and achievable across various types of employment. So, of course, there are various other factors at play, including the size and standing of an employer. But it does mean that both sides in a hiring process are more informed. Um, Beyond the obvious aim and actually the main driver behind the new salary transparency laws in the US of improving equity in the employment market, pay transparency can help firstly with retention of employees who will have a clearer view of their earning potential in the future. And secondly, in attracting talent from other industries. So this idea of retaining and broadening teams to facilitate a deeper exchange of expertise and knowledge is not only important as art businesses look to offer wider ranging services, but as we witness this hybridization of the arts through crossovers with other industries. So we're seeing total packages and even baseline salaries change, and in some cases increase, to align more closely with those other industries, such as tech and finance. And so right now, if we look at the global economy, there's definitely a lot of uncertainty about where things are and where they may be headed. What are we seeing in the art world lately in terms of the job market? Are we seeing a lot of hiring or layoffs or where do things stand? I think the year started with a level of uncertainty. And I'd say as the year goes on, things are not as active as last year's bounce back year. Um, That being said, the job market is, is relatively buoyant with a lot of clients still hiring and expanding and Demand for sales and business development talent in particular is is in high demand at the moment. And I think that's just so that businesses can continue to capitalize on post-pandemic regrowth and commercial opportunity. Well, one trend that I think most of us have noticed over the last couple of years has been the incredible level of gallery expansion. Galleries opening up new spaces in the cities where they already exist or moving into new geographies and expanding their footprint. How has this in significant and seemingly unprecedented level of expansion from galleries impacted the job market over the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that in the post-pandemic world, people are more open to transitioning to different cities as well. I mean, one of the things that really was surprising to us in terms of scale was just how much opportunity there is in the US outside of New York. So we saw a 200% increase in placements in the US outside of New York. And the real focus there is is Los Angeles. I mean, we a lot of our clients are expanding there and a lot of, uh, you know, coast to coast transitions are going on. 
And so we do have a lot of listeners to the podcast who are studying art history and want to eventually have a job within the art world. Since we have you here and you have such a unique perspective talking to employers every day, I'd love it if you could share just a few pieces of advice for listeners who are entering the art world or thinking about entering this space and really could use some guidance on how to get started. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I think be informed is is the best piece of advice that that I can give. I think that includes reading um, and going to shows as well, seeing art, being able to speak confidently about what your preferences are, what you're interested in, which artists you enjoy, and um, just staying on top of, you know, being educated in the market. And then, you know, getting out there and getting to know people as well, I think is really important. You know, we are a small industry. So, I think the more informed you are, the more networked you are is is only going to help you. Perfect. Rosie, thanks so much again for coming on the podcast and sharing your unique perspective on everything going on in the job market within the art world and for sharing some of your findings from the SML Art Market Salary Report. If our listeners haven't already, they should definitely check it out. Where can they uh, download the report? SophieMacPherson.com. Great. Thanks so much again, Rosie. Thanks so much, Adam.